How's it going, guys? Guess who? Yes, it's Chris Calder back again with a uh, part 10 of my Rapid Composer tutorial series. And this one also goes along with the chapter in our revised manual. And this is about phrase variations or track variations. Okay? So I threw in a very simple, famous chord progression. a custom phrase I made called chord ballad 2. Very simple, it's just kind of like eighth notes and quarters and you know it's basically uh, just a very simple thing where you can uh, easily hear the variations. So these are all the variations in Rapid Composer. You got remove note, double note, join notes, swap chord notes, permute chord notes, double phrase, triple phrase, mirror horizontally, quantize, humanize, strumming, swing, staccato legato, transpose, expression, limit note range, velocity generator, MIDI echo, and audio gain. Okay, first of all, audio gain, you're not going to be using it much. It's for audio tracks, and as you guys know, the audio track implementation in RC is, you know, pretty basic, limited. It's mainly a MIDI thing, but if you want, you can, you know, throw, like, some vocal samples in there or, like, something that's non-harmonic. Or, you know, if you know the perfect tempo of, of like a drum loop, such as like 120 BPM and your 120 BPM composition, you could throw one of those in just to see how drums sound, you know, with, with basic MIDI phrases and stuff like that. But you're probably not going to use that that much, so we'll check out all the others. So remove note. We're just going to, we're going to apply this to the entire track instead of phrases. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click our track. It's going to pull up the track inspector. And that's the first icon, the second one, the third one. That's where all the variations go. And by default, the expression variation shows up in the track. So we're going to add remove note. So all we got to do is just add remove note. And to show you what it does, see where it says selection note at index? If you move the parameter slider, you could see that it's kind of moving, you know, notes around, you know, kind of taking, you know, like one selected note like away just to kind of, it's a real basic variation, but as I move this slider you can see all the stuff changing on the screen. And let's see, it's how the phrase sounds, you know, with just this small variation. <laughs> kind of sounds the same, whatever. Um, then you could do event at index, which is more, you know, like where it basically creates a rest. And as you can see, you know, we'll do, we'll do that one, we'll do parameter two. So slight variation, then, you know, if we put it here at parameter 6, it'll get rid of some stuff at uh, beat 4. All right, get the idea. Uh, before time, um, obviously, you know, if the parameter slider is set too high, all the stuff goes away. Bring it back to the left. And if you guys ever see the screen kind of go white, it's mainly just like a, a, while I'm screencasting, like sometimes my computer gets all confused, so I apologize about that, the white flash. All right, so we'll do, I don't know, parameter two. We'll see how that sounds. A full rest on beat one. Actually, let me give you guys the metronomes you could hear. Okay. Then if we do parameter two, it puts a, a, a full rest on beats one and two. Okay, get the idea with that, and go to after time. As you can see, it creates the rest later on in the phrase. Okay, that's parameter two, this is parameter one. Alright, get the idea? Very powerful stuff. Even beats, um, the slider doesn't really affect this too much, it just gets rid of the stuff. Um, And you can do odd beats and it flips it around. Okay. Sometimes the parameter slider doesn't affect the notes. As you can see, nothing changes in the phrase as I move the slider. So it really depends on you know what you do, you know, your choice right here. So random note and random time. You know, again, just gotta play with it. Some some settings are going to have a more noticeable effect than others. It really depends on the phrase type and what you do, but just all kind of like tweaking stuff. 
So you got shortest note, you got longest note. You can mess with the parameter slider. Nope, that doesn't make any difference. You got all shortest notes. So all shortest notes, you know, you could see the uh, eighth notes disappeared, you know, that play the root of this phrase. Okay, and then all longest notes, you know, the eighth note roots do stay. So it's very powerful. And this is just the remove note variation. Okay, notes on whole beats. All right, or notes on in between beats. As you can see, it got rid of the one, two, three, four on this one. And right here, it keeps the one, two, three, four and gets rid of all the stuff that happens on the and. So very cool stuff. That's remove note. Double note basically does the same thing as remove note. And, you know, it's got the same types of parameters. So you got to play with your sliders and see, see what's up. You can barely see it on the screen, but you could see some of the quarter notes in the triad actually split in half, so they become eighth notes. Say, or da -na -na, actually 16s. And then, you know, the, the more you do the slider, you could see some notes doubling. You know. Yeah, see right there. See, that's a real cool thing. It just really depends on where you set your parameter slider. So, see, that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? Um, so that's what double note does. And I'm not going to go through all the other stuff. You guys pretty much saw it in random note. And join notes, you know, we'll add that. Let's see. So you can see it kind of lengthens the notes. All right. And then we'll take that away. We could do swap chord notes. And these kind of just just flip, you know, the the root and the third and the fifth around, you know. See how that created an automatic inversion of C? And an automatic ver inversion of G and A minor. That's the default, uh, you know, parameter type for swap chord notes, first and second. You can do first and third. This is how it sounds. Cool stuff, right? Second and third. So you can see the lower note not going up a fifth. It's only going up like a third. So really cool stuff. You see what I'm saying? I love these variations. I think this is one of the coolest features of the program. All right, so you get the idea what that does. And then we're going to go to permute chord notes. So we're going to add that. And you can see it switches stuff around in a similar fashion. So good stuff. Double phrase pretty much does exactly what you think it does. It makes the phrase twice as fast. All right. Same thing with triple phrase. It's going to make it three times as fast and probably give it some kind of triplet feel. Now obviously let's, uh, since that's so fast, let's lower the tempo to like 65 so you can kind of hear this a little bit better. It's a real easy way to kind of add fast triplets to a phrase. So that pretty much does exactly what you thought it would do. Going back to 120 BPM and checking out all the other variations. Mirror horizontally, pretty self-explanatory. It's just the same phrase backwards. And it really sounds interesting when you uh, try it with different patterns like finger picking generators or bass generators. Easy, cool stuff. Quantize does exactly what you think it does. If you got sloppy MIDI phrases, you can obviously apply that to the track, and it'll tighten everything up real quick. So, good stuff. Humanize obviously does the opposite of quantize. It's going to make everything a little bit more sloppy, a little bit more human, and you know, useful if you're looking for like a loose kind of feel. Strumming uh, is pretty cool. So strumming, if we as you can see, the phrase is kind of moving around. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. But this is real cool because it creates the feel of a guitar. It makes the MIDI notes a little bit off. So let's take a listen. 
So that's kind of obviously a quick arpeggio, but if we make it a little less noticeable, it'll be more like a strumming kind of sound. So it's almost like a humanized thing, but it's it's pretty pretty useful. I love it. You get those little uh I think those are called glissandos. Yeah, I think it's like a glissando, so you can kind of sort of have like a gliss effect. And with the strumming variation. Very cool stuff. And swing does exactly what you think it does on everything else that you've seen swing on. Um, so we're going to add it, and instead of this simple eighth note, you know, boring pattern, we're going to make it funky. If you set it to half beat, that's eighth note swing. So we'll, we'll do about 50, and we'll hear the difference. Check it out. Okay, here it is at about 28. Get a nice shuffle feel. Here it is with uh, 10. A tiny bit of swing, but I think this is usually the sweet spot, like right around here. As you guys can see, variations really um, make composing rapid. I mean, it's, it's awesome stuff. I mean, I don't think really most programs can do this kind of stuff this quickly, basically in real time. So that's good stuff. Uh, staccato, legato, you know, if you want to make your phrases more choppy, like obviously this has more of a, uh, a legato sound, this phrase. But take the slider, go to the left, all of a sudden it's choppy. Okay. Transpose basically does exactly what you think it does. When you drag on the composition, you can invert the chord. If you use transpose, we'll go back to the root position of this. There we go. If you use transpose, it's going to go up by semitones. So, obviously, you don't really want to use that too much because it's no longer a C chord. You know what I mean? But it can be useful in a lot of ways. Really up to you guys. So, expression defaults to the track, um, gives you a mix of MIDI note velocities, you know, strong, medium, weak, that kind of stuff. Most of the time, you don't have to mess with that. It's pretty great as is. Uh, limit note range. See, as you can see, like right there, see, it's kind of moving all the phrases, like whoa, you know, because like it doesn't, it won't let us do really low notes. So, and then if we go even higher, it just pretty much goes into a different octave, you know. Good stuff. And if you want your phrase really low, you can do your lowest note and limit your highest note. So, very easy. All right. Um, velocity generator. This is pretty cool. It kind of creates like fluctuations in the MIDI. If you want to get expression for like string sounds or string VSTs, you know. Um, amplitude, obviously, you know, when it's all the way up, it's going to be crazy, but this is more of a natural kind of thing. So awesome stuff, okay? That velocity generator is insane. You could do sine, triangle, sawtooth, square, linear, you know, it's 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 wild. So that's basically all the variations and you can mix and match to your heart's content. I just did one at a time just to show you what they do, but you can you can throw in as many variations as you want and duplicates of stuff. You can add a couple occurrences of remove note if you want. You could combine mirror horizontally with swing if you want. Um you could combine that with staccato, so we'll, we'll make it real choppy, we'll make it real swing. And, you know, obviously mirror horizontally, so here's our new phrase. We could add double phrase if we want, and you can mix and match variations to your heart's content. So uh, that's pretty much variations in Rapid Composer, and you can apply them um, individually to uh, phrases if you want, and not an entire track. Like obviously, I right-clicked, you know, this phrase, and there's no phrase variations. It still, it still has the track variations applied to it. But if you want to add some stuff, I don't know, like strumming, for instance, you can make this phrase normal, and then this one kind of strummed. <laughs> You get the idea. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So it's pretty insane. Again, phrase variations in Rapid Composer. Uh, thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for the next vid.